will there ever come a time where I'm just like comfortable when this thing starts going? I don't think so. Hi guys, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel and this is my February wrap up. February was an okay reading month for me. There was a bit of a slumpy period there but I did read some really good books and I read the first book of the year that made me want to gauge my eyes out. So I'm just gonna go through them in chronological order and basically this is what I read for February 2020. The first book I read in February was Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinst McQuinston? You know what? This whole mispronouncing author's name thing is going to be a thing. There's not much I can say about this book that hasn't already be been said all over YouTube. Everybody loves it and there's good reason why. I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars and in case you don't know what it's about, it's about the first son of the United States and a prince of England that fall in love and for somebody that doesn't even like romance in general, this just hit everything for me. In fact, when I was done reading this, I pretty much went into this whole thing where I refused to believe that these people are not real. Which says a lot about my mental state. But anyway, I loved it. 5 out of 5 stars. The next book I finished in February is actually a Kindle book and it's called The Dark Beneath the Eyes by Amelinda Berube. Now this is a book about a girl who thinks she's being possessed and we kind of go through this whole thing of her trying to find out whether she is possessed, whether this is actually a mental illness or something. But it's pretty clear, this is not a spoiler, it's pretty clear from the beginning. Girl's got a demon inside of her. This book was okay. I think it kind of fell into quite a few cliches. But overall, I gave this book a 3.75 stars. It was really entertaining. It was kind of gay, which I loved. And it was a nice little read. I, I really... There's really nothing extraordinary about it, but it was also really good and really entertaining. The next book I read in February was The Vanishing Stair by Maureen Johnson. And I honestly read this because I started hearing buzz about it because the last book, The Hand on the Wall, came out uh, this past month, I believe. And everybody was like, oh my god, it's amazing. The end of the series is so good. So I picked it up and I loved The Vanishing Stair. It's actually my favorite book in the whole trilogy. In case you didn't know, The Vanishing Stair is about a group of kids who are considered extraordinary in different ways aspects of their life. So for example, we have some kids that are very good at mechanics and some kids that are really good at forensics and some kids that are have written books or actors and everything and they all go together to this school in the middle of nowhere to basically hone their talents. The thing is, this school is plagued by a horrible murder that happened many, many years ago. And our main character, Stevie, is tasked, well, she's not tasked, but she makes the decisions that she's going to figure out what happened. What all happened here in 1930s, but people start dying in the present day. So it's a murder mystery, and it's not very scary, like if you have any kind of anxiety and stuff like that. This might not be a book that scares the bejeebus out of you. And I love this second installment and I gave it 4 stars. Actually, I gave it 4.5, but... The next book I read was another physical book and I have it right here. I'm sorry if there's like a lot of glare, but it's called El Capitán a la Triste and it was written by Arturo y Carlota Pérez Reverte. Now this is a very famous Spanish book and it's about the time in Spain where there were like um, it's about a chines. I don't know how to say it in English, but basically it's a time in Spain where um, things weren't safe and there were a lot of duels on the streets with swords and the Inquisition and everything. And overall, this is a really nice book. It's like, um, it's a fun book, but I gave it only four stars simply because a lot of the times there are chapters where nothing happens. It's just absolutely backstory and everything. And while that might be to some people's taste, I was like, just please give me like sword duels. That's what I want. But another interesting thing about this book is that it it's actually historical fiction. So 
All of the characters you see in here, except for the main character, are actual characters in Spanish history. And they're written in a way where the introduction of this main character seems to fit so seamlessly that you actually start to believe that he is real and that these things happen. So if you're looking to read something outside of your comfort zone that is about somewhere other than the US, and that can teach you a little bit about Spanish history, then I definitely recommend picking up this book. It's actually a series. I'm not sure I'm picking up the rest just because the writing style wasn't to my taste. But if you're curious, I highly recommend it. The next book I read in February, why do I keep saying that? Of course it's the next book. We're going in chronological order. But anyway, the next book I read in February was Little Women by Louisa May Alcott whom I call Louisa Marie Alcott all the time. I'm so sorry, but <laughs> it's Louisa May Alcott. This book, do I really need to say what it's about? It's, with the movie that came out, I'm pretty sure everyone knows by now what this book is about. But in case you've been living under a rock and you somehow found this channel, which is how I imagine people that find this channel do, this book is about the March sisters. There are four of them. There is Amy, Joe, Beth, Meg, and that's it, Amy, Jo, Beth, and Meg. <laughs> and it's about them growing up. This book made me feel like a hug from the inside. And if you're scared of getting into classics because classics tend to be really depressing, this book really is a way to get into a classics where you just feel good about what you read. It's nothing like depressing. Well, there is a depressing part, but I'm not gonna get into that. I gave this book a five out of five stars. It's amazing and I read it just so that I could go see the movie. Because even though I had seen all the other like adaptations, I had never read the book and I thought, what a better time to read the book than now. And this, I think, is probably going to be in my top 10 books that I've read this year, honestly. It's amazing. I 100% recommend it. Five out of five stars. I don't know how many times I said that. After Little Women, I picked up this graphic novel called Thornhill by Pam Smith. Now this is kind of a graphic novel, but it also does have like some journal entries. And it's basically, it's told in two timelines. One is in the past about a little girl that's being horribly bullied at this home for girls called Thornhill. And then the present is about another girl named Ella who seems to be living a very kind of isolated, sad life. She just moved away. You kind of get the idea that her mom died. And it's about these two stories intertwining. I, I'm having a hard time saying it's a sweet book because it ain't sweet. It's, it, but it does deal with the whole nostalgia of being a kid, of that crazy house at the end of the road that nobody goes into. But I'm just gonna say this book deals with bullying in a way that really made me like have to take a step back sometimes because it was really, really realistic. I gave this book 3.5 stars because even though it was good, I felt that there was so much more to the story and I just, I would like to read an actual novel of this story instead of it just being told through pictures. I just, I felt that there was a little bit missing, but I would still recommend it. It's, an, it's just a really harrowing and yet beautiful read. The next book I picked up in February is Magic for Liars by Sarah Gailey. And this book is basically about two sisters. <laughs> One of them is magical, the other one is not. And then there is a murder, and the non-magical sister has to go help the magical sister figure this murder out. And I saw many places this be compared to um, like Harry Potter and being like, oh, murder at Harry Potter, and please don't listen to those people. This is the magicians. This is murder at a magician's like school. And when I when I say the magicians, I do mean the magicians by Lef Grossman. So if you're into that kind of magic, like the more gritty, ugly, not sweet version of magic, then this is the book for you. I gave this book five out of five stars. It's probably gonna be on the list of my top 10 favorite books of 2020, simply because the murder aspect of it, to me, was not important. I kind of figured it out 
I would say, a third into a book, but that's not what matters. To me, this book is about the idea that magic exists, and number one, if magic exists, it's actually not all that magical, because in the end, we are still just humans. And number two, accepting the fact that you are not magical, and that maybe that doesn't mean that you don't have magic within you. The book really deals a lot with that kind of stuff, and that's something that I love. And I'm a, like, I have a sister, not a twin sister, but it's just me and my sister. And I felt myself really understanding a lot of those feelings of why her, why me, why you, eh, you know, you left me alone, and because one of us went to college, and that kind of stuff. If you're into that, this book is definitely for you. And it's just a really intense, beautiful book, and I just loved it. Five out of five stars. I said it before, I'll say it again. And it's probably going to make it into the top ten of the year because it's just so amazing. Um, but again, if you're looking for Hogwarts and that kind of stuff, this is not the book for you. If you like the magicians, pick up Magic for Liars. The next book I read, I actually read it as an audiobook, and that is The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson. Now, this book is the final book in the Truly Devious series, and I must admit, I didn't really like it. As I said before, this book follows Stevie, who is trying to solve the murder of her school that happened in the 1930s, I believe, and, well, of course, she solves it, and I just found it all to anticlimactic, I guess. It just wasn't my cup of tea. I was expecting more from the book, and it just kind of fell flat for me. I gave this book a very generous three stars. It just wasn't for me, and I, I would have been so happy if they had finished with the second book, like taken the last little bit of the third book and just added it to the second book, and that would have been fine for me. Also, the adults in these books are idiots like straight up like like idiots it's and i hate that in any any book not just any young adult book but i hate it when adults act like morons and then the, the kids are the ones that are like oh my god saving the world and i understand that there's a demographic for that but that's just personally not to my taste the next book i picked up in february was rebecca by daphne du maurier and hmm I can't, this is 5 out of 5 stars, stop, in fact, stop this video right now, if you haven't read this book, go read it. This book is freaking amazing. However, I want to throw a disclaimer out there that if you do suffer from anxiety, this might not be the book for you. I suffer from anxiety and I really liked it, but I actually had to stop myself from reading it every now and then because I was starting to feel a little bit insecure. But anyway, the book is amazing, the writing is amazing. And it's just overall incredible. And if you don't know what this book is about, it's about a woman who we don't know her name. And she meets and marries this older, uh, very wealthy man who was married to a woman named Rebecca. And she thinks that she's just kind of there as a like stand-in for Rebecca and that he's in love with the Rebecca and everything around her life since they get married revolves around Rebecca and she becomes obsessed with Rebecca and well that's it I'm not gonna tell you anymore because it's a mystery however I will say that the only um, Academy Award winning uh, film for Alfred Hitchcock is the movie based off of this book now we're not gonna go into Hitchcock and his um, how do I say, problematic personality or anything. But I will say that I did go to film school and I watched Rebecca and the movie is amazing. And anyway, you can find it online so you're not going to exactly give Hitchcock any money anyway, he's dead. So not that because he's dead, his deeds are forgiven or anything. But if you want to see it, it's an amazing movie. And the book was amazing, five out of five stars. Another book which I think will make it in my top ten of the year. Really, this month was just an incredible reading month for me. That is until until the next book I'm going to talk about. The final book I read in February, and the book that put me in a reading slump, and the book that I just don't understand, and 
if this is your jam, I'm good, you know, good for you, I'm uh, more power to you. But man, was this book boring for me, and that is Renegades by Marissa Meyer. This book had everything, had everything perfect, including the beautiful cover, which I'm sure my crappy camera is not picking up, but this book had everything. It's X-Men, it's kind of, I was, I thought, kind of like the boys and it's got like intrigue and, and it's got vengeance and and it it falls really flat like flat like beep like that flat um it's boring there's so many action sequences and yet during the whole action sequences i could tell without even reading it what was going to happen like what was going to be the final um what was go what was going to be the result of these action sequences it was just boring in fact there were entire chapters where i began the chapter and i was like this is gonna happen this is gonna happen this is gonna happen and it all happened it's predictable it's really boring and honestly i gave it 1.5 stars and that was mostly because i did appreciate that there was some um, representation in this book that we don't normally see and the writing was not bad I mean it's not like it's not like she had run-on sentences or anything like that it shows that somebody or well Marisa Meyer is a good writer but just this is just not the book for me man I'm, I, I, it, I really did not like this book and that's it. Those are the 11 books I finished this month. I had planned on finishing two more, but actually I started filming and I took the whole afternoon doing it and I didn't. So we'll see what I finish in March. I hope March is equally as good of a reading month as February was. I am going to be more busy in March, so I'm not sure, but for now, that's everything that I read in March. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!